On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're visiting the incredibly stylish Ron David Edwards at his Maryland home. Built in 1969, you feel like you're stepping into a mid-century modern time capsule that is full of well-preserved vintage furniture. Ron is only the second owner of this ranch-style home, and it was love at first sight. Enjoy! Hi everyone, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we want to thank Floorfound for sponsoring today's Homeworthy episode. I'm actually so excited to tell you more about this company because what they are doing in the furniture space is absolutely incredible. It's all about getting you luxury furniture and kitchen appliances for less. So how do they do that? Every year, people return items that end up getting tossed, with 9 million tons of furniture ending up in landfills. But enter Floorfound. They carefully hand inspect thousands of returned items and then resell these in-box and like new items for deep discounts. For example, look at this beautiful dining table that's normally $4,000. Floorfound is selling it for $1,400. That's 65% off. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, you can see that it says like new and you can see images. So to see all of the fabulous furniture and appliances they have and to get shopping, be sure to check out the link below in the description box. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, Homeworthy. My name is Ron David. Welcome to my Maryland home, right this way. My name is Ron David Edwards, and I am the creative director and owner of Ron David Studio, a multi-dimensional uh, design uh, firm that does residential, retail, and hospitality here in Washington, D.C. Um, and growing to other cities around the U.S. Welcome to my studio residence here in Lanham, Maryland. It is just 17 minutes from downtown Washington, D.C., um, located on one acre, and it's water adjacent, and it's 3,900 square feet uh, with four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms, and it is a mid-century time capsule of a home um, built in 1969. Um, and it was a custom commissioned home from Dr. Henry A. Wise, who was a Tuskegee Airman, and he also has a high school named after him in PG County. And uh, I feel really honored to have this home. I'm the, the, the second owner of this property. So welcome to my foyer. I'm so glad to have you into my personal residence. Um, the first thing that struck me with this home was the double doors. I have dreamed of double doors my entire life. The catch is you never open both of them. You only open one at a time. So um, you don't actually get to use them all the time, but I love having them. Um, the home, of course, was built in 1969 uh, from the original owners. Uh, and this door was something that was so dynamic and so beautiful that I was able to salvage and keep it. I love it. Even the little door handles are all the same, all the vintage locks. And I just love looking at it. I love that it's so, the, the tones are very rustic, but mid-century and the scale is massive and et cetera, et cetera. So love this part of the home. Again, um, I love coming into a space with massive art. I think massive art reads as luxury. And that was something that I wanted to incorporate into my home. And so when I purchased this home, I noticed so many opportunities for large pieces of art. And um, immediately I wanted to paint the wall black because I really like uh, dark colors. This color is actually called tricorn black, tricorn black, which is maybe a hint of gray, but it reads this black to the eye. And I sourced this amazing picture. And the funny story behind this picture is that sometimes when I'm really, really busy, this is how I actually feel. Like my nose is barely, <laughs> keeping it above the water. Um, but it was such a dynamic piece. I love the color juxtaposed on the dark wall. And this is like my model of life. You know, you just gotta just kind of relax and just keep your nose up, keep your head up, focus, and you're gonna survive. So that's the story behind this piece right this way. So right off of the main entrance is my main living area. 
And what I love about this area in the home is that it's flooded with natural light. Um, the home has 10 foot windows all the way across. And I was able to, in this, in this space, salvage uh, some original pieces of furniture from the original owners, uh, Dr. Henry A. Wise and his family. Um, the pieces were the beautiful, uh, I want to say teddy bears. I don't know what the actual fabrication of that would be called, but the beautiful sofa and the caramel, um, the, um, the vinyl orange chair, which I'm obsessed with, and this beautiful chocolate brown mid-century piece that is actually like 500 pounds. So if it's that heavy, that's how you know it's a real piece of furniture. Um, so I was really, really happy to salvage those pieces. And it was really just on me to make sure I kept as much integrity um, in this home as I put my own touch on it. So I was really happy to be able to save these pieces. The saving grace was that during that time, people used to wrap furniture in plastic, like in this like really interesting percussion, 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 like zippy plastic. And it secretly preserved the furniture for years. And I was able to, um, when I acquired the home, I was able to write into the contract uh, to keep several pieces of the furniture. And, this, and these were the pieces that I was, was able to, to keep and use. And it, it brings so much character and joy to the home. And no one can find the pieces of furniture. And it's like a little jewel in my crown that you can't find these pieces. So love it. So in this area, I love that it's so much natural light in this, in this part of the home, primarily because the courtyard, which is all floor to ceiling glass, is exposed on this side. We also have these massive domes that are on the ceiling that really crown the dining room and crown the formal living room. I was really eager to play with how many colors can we bring into this room in a very elegant way. And I was able to do that by adding these floor to ceiling uh, velvet drapes. Now I have a little secret is that these drapes are from Ikea, Ikea. Um, who I think has amazingly executed velvet drapes on a large scale um, and they just bring me so much joy and one of my design elements and components is that I'm not afraid to like pull good pieces from everywhere. I'm not married to you know, everything from restoration, everything from CB2. I like to put the homes together like a puzzle and I really take pride in how I was able to put this space together, my personal space, um, by bringing together these random elements and creating this beautiful tapestry um, of color, tones, and texture. You see that we came up a step. Sunken living rooms just give me Mad Men vibes, and um, I love it. I absolutely love it, and I have this massive dining table, and I had this obsession with pink, and I think that pink it's such a fun color to make masculine. Oftentimes you see it paired with chocolate browns. And at one point before I painted the house, which I do almost every six months, um, this back wall was a chocolate brown. And I had this massive table, um, uh, Parsons table, and these uh, actual living room chairs um, that I, I'm using as dining room chairs. Um, I wanted to pair the pink tones, the velvet tones, with the brown, but again, once I did my second reiteration of the home and just made everything bright, um, this has been one of my favorite areas to dine and sit. I have this little rule that I only sit on fabric chairs. I do not sit on hard chairs. So as you see through the home, there are no chairs that are hard in here. I love comfortable chairs, and I noticed that the restaurants that I go to all have very plush chairs. And I, was, I actually took that inspiration from one of my favorite dining restaurants, Fig and Olive, here in, in downtown Washington. And my favorite table, Table 72, is a low, a low table, but all the chairs were side chairs, and it's so comfortable. And I'll go there and sit and have lunch sometimes, and I read my magazine and read it over the email and, and just get my bearings for the day. But those chairs allowed me to feel like I was recharging, and it didn't make me feel like I was just like eating. So that was some, something that I wanted to bring into my home and I was able to execute that um, in my primary dining room. My design style is very much like a puzzle. Um, I would say I lean more into mid-century um, design. 
Um, when I was a kid, uh, before I had money to shop, you know, luxury, I would shop like vintage and thrift like all the time. And I would have like $20, and this was before the thrift store was like expensive. Um, but I would like, go to the thrift shop and I would just buy all these things. And what I noticed is that I learned the essence of creating beauty from things that are inexpensive is that you can put things together like a puzzle and really have a beautiful outcome. And so um, that has been like my mantra in like life and also in design. And I think the way I, I approach design is like a puzzle. Like I find these pieces everywhere and I put it together. It definitely, definitely leans more uh, mid-century, definitely modern, uh, but also very cozy and approachable. Um, I love spaces that you can actually be in and enjoy that are also equally as beautiful. It's important to note that these massive floor-to-ceiling windows are original to the home. I have not changed them yet. Um, but these were like, uh, initially were all op um, able to open in and out and you can enjoy the patio and the terrace from all aspects of the home. Now on the back side of the home, the glass is just a uh, window. But from this area and the front area in the kitchen, at one point they were able to be enjoyed um, at all times, like an indoor, like an indoor outdoor living uh, arrangement. Um, now these are like sealed off and closed. So the only access to the courtyard is from the kitchen, but the entire home is built around this courtyard. The entire center of the home is glass and it just really floods each room with natural light. The very first night I moved into the house, I could not find the hall light. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This home does not have a hall light. This is crazy. And then it dawned on me that the courtyard light is the hall light. So when you click it um, at nighttime, you have this beautiful ambient light that really fills the entirety of the home um, because that courtyard light is the hall light because the whole house is built around the courtyard. Really interesting, really dynamic, and one of the things that really made me fall in love with the home. This is one of my favorite pieces of art. I can't stop staring at it. It's called Pills. And I just fell in love with this piece um, because it was very mid-century. Um, one of my favorite songs from St. Vincent is called Pills, Pills, Pills. And it's so funny because it talks about like people take pills for everything to get up in the morning, to go to sleep, to like get in the mood. Like pills will just run our world. And in my busy life of entrepreneurship, it's like, oh my God, it's so funny. Like we got to take pills for everything. And so this piece reminded me of like the 70s and like drugs and you know, uh, but um, this painting just incorporated, it just spoke to the home to me. It just centered all the coloring, uh, the color components of the home. And it's just my, one of my favorite pieces. I love it. I saw this house come on the market at like seven o'clock in the morning. I had just purchased another house six months before. And I was walking my dog at 7 a.m. and just scrolling through what just came on the market and I saw this mid-century home that I knew should be in like Palm Springs. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. This is in like DC. And I literally put my dog in the car and drove over here and I was like, my heart was beating so fast. And I remembered I had driven past this home at one point, maybe like a year before, and thought to myself, I would live there. And I didn't think anything more of it after that, but I was like, oh my God, that's that house I drove past that was so cool. And as soon as I walked in the house, it was a literally 1969 capsule. All the furniture had like plastic over it, like the old school, like don't sit on the couch plastic. And it was so dynamic. And literally my brain was like, holy smokes, it's gonna cost a fortune to remodel this place. But then it was also like, this is like my dream home. It would either cost a million dollars to build it today, or I can just buy the home and just remodel it piece by piece by piece and really make it um, what I see it, you know, has turned into today. Um, when it finally hit the market, every time I rode past the home, it would be like 10 people walking around the house. And I just knew I wasn't gonna get the house because I'm like, Someone's gonna pay cash. Like, I'm not gonna be able to win it. A developer's gonna buy it. Like, and um, I would come to the house. I found the owner's names. I called them. I came here every day. I tried to be friends with them. And they chose my offer. I paid $100,000 over list, but they still chose my offer. 
And I literally cried in the car when I like when they when the agent called me and told me that I got the house because it was like a home that I just really, really wanted and I never wanted a house that bad. Um, so I was so excited and um, I feel really honored that I was able to to win that 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 offer. Welcome to my kitchen. This is one of my favorite rooms in the home and the most unique rooms of, of the house, primarily because of this massive window here. I had never seen a window so big like in the kitchen. And when I first purchased the home, this window had this old, old, old curtain over it and it was so dark. And literally the first thing I did was like rip the curtain down and I was able to see how much light just filled this massive kitchen. Um, also, while living in the house, I never was, uh, I never decided to cover the window because it's just, it's always something to look out of. My neighbors are pretty far away across the street, so you can never really see anything in the home. Um, but uh, my inspiration behind the kitchen was similar to the exterior of the home, is to create a, a kitchen that didn't really feel like a kitchen, but felt more like a, like a beautiful room that you could enjoy food in. And so as you can see, I took down all of the upper cabinets. There's no upper cabinets in the home. And I opted for a, a butcher block countertop that I could stain black. And I just had this vision of all lower cabinets so that when you came into the room, you knew it was a kitchen, but you weren't overtaken by the, by the fact that it was a kitchen. It was more of, of a, just a beautifully designed space that aesthetically was seamless with the rest of the home. Um, I opted for a black um, indu induction countertop I mean, black induction stove, um, and of course my industrial, um, my industrial sink. And then I kept the original Sub-Zero refrigerator. It was working and I thought it was such a cute little quirky thing to keep. Whenever it goes out, I'll have to replace it with the Sub-Zero. But for now, I love that it's old. I love that it's vintage. And it just reminds me of the history of the home. Um, also, when I first purchased the home, this um, light area here where the dining table, the kitchen table was sitting used to be sort of in the middle of this space here. And I love the, the notion of just massive spaces. And so I had the light moved from just right next to the kitchen to the other side of the kitchen. And it just creates this massive space to just walk through. And um, being that once you live in the home and you come in and out of the house from the garage, I wanted a beautiful foyer for myself. Um, to enjoy on a daily basis. And so because of that, I created a new foyer, if you would, in between my kitchen and my dining space that made me feel elegant and made me feel like I could relax and it just wasn't a bunch of stuff right in the door. Um, and that was the creation of this like nothingness here, um, which I love. So this art here is really speaks to my personal style. I'm like a smash up of, of classic contemporary components, modern components, urban components. Um, the Rare Essence Wu-Tang Flyer was an original flyer that is, um, Rare Essence is a DC based like go-go band that's like, people rave about Rare Essence. I am not from Washington DC, but I've been here for 14 years and I know that go-go is serious business here in Washington and people that know DC know go-go. And one of my clients actually, one partner, could not, did not love the art, and one partner was obsessed with the art, and so technically, that Rare Essence flyer, which is a collector's item, is on, um, I'm holding it for my clients, and it's been in here for eight years. I've had it for eight years. <laughs> so it's technically not mine, but I'm holding it for my friends slash clients. And this Mona Lisa piece of art here, I had to hustle, um, which was a part of the, um, Virgil Abloh collection with Ikea he did maybe two years before his passing. And so I remember when he did the collaboration with Ikea and did this Mona Lisa. And as you can see, it has one of those um, off-white Virgil Abloh design components, which is the light box behind it and then the orange cord that kind of hangs from the bottom. Um, I stood in line from six o'clock in the morning and I tried to buy every single piece from that collection. I got most of the pieces. Um, but when I got into the store, this piece was sold out. And randomly, I got to my car and this guy comes up to me and he says, hey, did you want that Mona Lisa painting? And I said, yes, I do. And he racked the price up like 10 times and I still bought it. And I'm very proud of this piece. It's one of my favorite pieces. And um, it's just, it's classic, but it's cool. And I love it and I love putting them together. 
I also collect Vogue magazines. I'm very, very into fashion. Of course, I own a fashion label. And I think print media is so niche and so cool that I want to invest in it. So I have um, subscriptions with Vogue, subscriptions with Arc Digest. Um, do I read them? No. Um, but I just collect them and I stack them everywhere. I have stacks through my home, stacks through my offices. And um, here's like a little um, stack of some vintage Vogue covers. I also had these beautiful um, pieces of china. I can't think of the correct term, but the blue and white china that I'm obsessed with. And I just like to smash the components together. And I just think it just gives you a beautiful feast to the eyes. Wow, my career path was a little bit of a river uh, creek, if you would. Um, I started in, in fashion, um, just in retail sales, and had a secret obsession with real estate, a secret obsession with interior design. And uh, I think the long story short is uh, I worked a short, a short time as a uh, NBA stylist, a fashion stylist for a few NBA players, moved to DC in 2009 where I worked as a professional, as a personal shopper and um, did that for years through college to support myself through school. And before I knew it, I had a book of clients that just wanted to shop with me and um, that enabled me to start my, my fashion brand, Ron David. And um, while doing Ron David, I also got into real estate um, and I started to help people different clients buy and sell. And then before you know it, I had a retail store in the Four Seasons Hotel, and then I had a real estate development company, and now I have two stores. And it's just, now I just have surrendered to just being a niche creative entrepreneur. And people come to me when they want my touch on things, whether it's residential, retail, or fashion. <laughs> Welcome to the great room. This room is a little different from the other rooms in that I use more muted, neutral tones. Um, when I, um, at one point, this space used to be my office space before I converted it into my secondary entertainment space. And I loved it because it was so full of natural light. Um, the original owner said that at one point when they were building the house, this room was supposed to be all glass but that there were delays with the glass coming from where it was being developed. And so they opted to have these, to do it in brick and then have these tall floor to ceiling uh, windows throughout and the ceiling, the ceiling height is 14 feet. So it's pretty tall. Um, and I just love this. It also looks over the back of the one acre property, which the home sits on. And there's a little reservoir, man-made lake that's behind it. And it's just really beautiful to look at and enjoy. Um, this room features this massive brick fireplace that I love and I just love to sit here and watch television, um, read a book, sometimes have a nice salad. Um, but one of my favorite rooms and I was so thrilled that I was able to put this massive piece of art here. Another reason why I love this home so much is that it had never ending spaces for large scale art. And this piece I actually found in Virginia that I bought from this sweet old couple um, that had this piece in their home. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is going in the great room. And I had to schlep this into my G-Wagon and I don't know how it fit. We had to like move it, move it, move it, move it. And I carried it myself here into the house. And um, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite pieces of art that I have in the home. So the rug here is also the Virgil Abloh Keep Off Rug from the Ikea collaboration. Um, that was a very, very special piece that I wanted to keep um, and have display here at my home. So yes, this is one of those pieces to keep off from Virgil Abloh. So the, the actual story is when I bought my beautiful fiddle leaf fig trees, they needed light all the time. And so when I would close the drapes and open the drapes, they were like growing weirdly. And so I said, you know what, let me pull them down so that I can always let light in the home, but I can also have privacy. And so it was just the point where I felt like when I'm in this room, it would never be dark in the daytime, even when the drapes are pulled. And so um, this, I think it's about 14 inches. I just have my contractor. I said, just hang them all 14 inches down. And uh, it allows the light to come in at all times, but it also allows me to have privacy in the home. 
Um, and it creates this like weird little like line, more because a home is a square and it's lots of squares everywhere, you know, from the furniture layouts and the, and the different components. Um, but it just gives me that 14 inch of light always through the home, even when I need privacy. These fiddle leaf trees, like, this was like my last go round with trying to have them. And I said, if I can just keep them, honey, I, <laughs> They are, they are, they've been here for two years. They are still living. And so I am not moving a thing. And I don't, I don't move the table or anything. It just stays put, you know, but they're growing well and I'm so proud of them. Um, I think the most, the most amazing thing I love about the house is every time someone comes in the door and they turn the corner from the entry hall, they always say, wow. I don't know if that's like a thing, like the home itself, but it's a feeling that people feel when they come in here is like, it's the same for every single person. I've never had someone come in the house from the front door and like, not say like, holy, sh you know, holy smokes, this house, like, they're like, wow, you know? And so just the, dy the dynamics of the home are, are my favorite, the natural light, um, the sunken living rooms. Um, it's just so 70s and the 70s were like everything, I think, to me. Welcome to my primary bedroom. In this space, I wanted to create a room that reminded me of my favorite hotels, which was pleasant, minimal furnishings, but made me feel cozy and safe and just inspired me. And um, I wanted to create those components with this, with the dark colored walls that really made me feel like I was winding down, that I was relaxing. And I wanted also areas to be able to sit in the room and read and read a book and just collect my bearings. As you know, in the room, I do not have a television because I wanted the room to be a place where I can literally zone out and just really recharge and prepare for my day. Um, one of the main things that I love about this space is of course the king size bed. The king size bed and the headboard were actually original to the home and was the original headboard from the owners uh, slash builders of the home um, back in 1969. Of course, I paired it with very white, neutral bedding, um, ecru colored uh, comforter, and in period with the home, I wanted to add in um, more texture. So you can see that in the boucle chair, um, the mixing of the prints between the rug and my ottoman here, and then also a note, um, and my note desk with my mushroom light, which I am so, so obsessed about. When this light came in, I looked at it for like 30 minutes because I'm just so obsessed with it. Um, Another highlight of the room is this beautiful art that I have from DC-based artist Markel Sims. And along with other themes in the home, I'm obsessed with large-scale pieces of art. And I wanted to incorporate this into my home. Um, because I chose such a muted palette um, in this space, this piece of art really spoke to me. It inspires me. It makes me excited for the day. Um, and it just really gives me you know, an energy that says like, you know, recharge, reset, and it inspires me. So I was really happy to be able to fit this massive piece into the room. Oh, so I am wearing, actually this is, a lot of these are items from my collection. So this is my blazer, um, a Ron David blazer from my winter collection. This is my Ron David sweater from my winter collection. I have a Ron David pants as well, uh, my cargos, and I paired it with some Dior loafers. And I have on Ron David eyewear. So I'm wearing all my, all my own clothing brand. So this bathroom was, um, I love to marry components of vintage and modern. And I think now with the new age of mid-century modern design, I wanted to keep a lot of the original components which spoke to those mid-century elements and then add in the modern points from like today's standards. So um, looking at the bathroom, the vanity was original and so I had never seen a vanity like this, and I was like, oh my God, um, it's so vintage looking. When I purchased the home, the sink and the bathtub were pink. And I thought it was really cool, but then once I finally perfected my vision to design this space, I wanted to make the, I wanted to keep as many original components as possible, but then make them modern. I was able to accomplish that by doing what is called a reglazing. So I reglazed the tub and reglazed the sinks um, to be white. And then of course I upgraded them with uh, the three uh, piece black um, faucet. And then I painted the bathroom this really beautiful sage gray, which allowed the beautiful gold uh, mirrors to pop. And also it worked well against this vintage 
um, countertop, which I was able to keep and salvage. Um, as you can see, the tile is a linen tile. It's actually a, um, a ceramic tile, but it has this printed um, linen finish to it, which is so cool. And I thought this bold print was so dynamic to put in the bathroom. It was just interesting, especially in a space where you don't usually have wall art. I was inspired by the tile that could become that art in the space. So I have it all along the floors and also around the bathtub. And um, this is one of my favorite rooms. It turned out exactly how I wanted it to. Home is safety, home is security, home is warmth. Home is the opportunity to recharge. Um, home is beauty. Um, home is inspiration. Thanks for watching. For more home worthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.